You're listening to a Shockcast original. Shock. The C word with Callista. Welcome to another episode of The C Word, your favorite podcast where we talk all things content and basically everything that's going on in the online world where something called cancel culture is right now especially a hotly debated topic and our guest today has actually been pretty vocal about the whole subject so I think today could be pretty interesting. So Miss Alvi, thanks for coming on to the show. Hi, nice to meet you, Kelsa. <laughs> yes, nice to finally meet you. I only see you through the screen like my phone screen <laughs> yeah yeah so I've known you from TikTok where you mm-hmm. do a lot of comedy videos and stuff like that right mm-hmm. but what really made me uh, want to reach out to you was recently I saw you like doing a lot of tweets being like I said being mm-hmm. very vocal about the whole cancel culture especially like here in Malaysia before we talk about that whole subject like you are very active online right kind of active yeah on all platforms <laughs> yeah on all platforms but I kind of like took a break from YouTube but mostly yeah Yeah, all platform yeah where do you think is the most <laughs> dangerous which platform is the most dangerous when it comes to like cancel culture twitter yeah twitter can get pretty <laughs> toxic i think yeah but have you ever had any personal encounters with like cancel culture very mild i'm not completely canceled but it's not so big as other cancel culture out there was it something to do with like something you did or something you said or was it just that one day this group of people decided that they didn't like you or your content basically it's not really something i said because i'm very open about certain things that i do in my life i think mm-hmm. i don't know if i should say this but certain things that i do in my life and they attack me at that time it was very new to me that i got known on twitter so i was very vocal and defended myself so probably certain things that i say is not very welcome to a group of people and they're constantly attacking me from there so they attack me not just in terms of my what I say I, I mean like what I say could be wrong and then uh, I admitted my mistake but sometimes they they attack you personally like your looks or things like that so it can be very bad yeah and mm. I feel like we've come to this whole place where you okay number one you can't really have like a different opinion the funny thing is every platform has different levels of what they accept and what they they, they don't accept accept right so it's hard yeah, to like, yeah. know where you stand as well other than that like it's like you're not allowed to make a mistake online anymore like once you make that's one true. mistake that's it yeah sometimes when i post things i have to think twice of what I, i need to post or what i want to post i'm sure not everybody likes my content and it is okay but sometimes when someone else personal attack me not in terms of my contents but in terms of like maybe how i look or how i dress it can be very toxic and very painful mm. when does it go from being okay we're holding this person accountable for their actions mm. and crossing the line into like okay now this is just completely toxic cancel culture mm, I think I believe that everyone make mistakes for me it's okay to tell someone off you know there's a difference between constructive criticism and borderline toxic you can definitely like if someone made a mistake online it's okay to talk about it and it's okay to tell them off but I've seen people go go borderline toxic where they send death threats and then mm-hmm. or ask them to move out of Malaysia or different state or things like that that's just toxic if you comment you know all this toxic to do this person you, you're also the same you get what I mean yeah 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 like you're also toxic so yeah especially like I find on TikTok this happens a lot like people are like mm-hmm. oh in this case cyberbullying is okay have you seen those comments right yeah I've seen those comments I really don't like it I don't know I feel like we we live in a what do you call this snowflake generation Mm -hmm. like generation where people get very sensitive about certain things and we cannot have different opinion if let's say your opinion differs from the majority you get cancelled for that i feel like the whole cancel culture situation it's the opposite of what you want to do like if somebody has a view that you think is wrong why mm-hmm. would you want to give them a bigger platform you should just ignore it mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. nobody sees it nobody gets hurt and it will go mm-hmm. away that person will go away you know but if you send mm-hmm. all this hate most of the time this person mm-hmm. actually gets bigger on social media they gain followers and they gain mm-hmm. this group of people who have that opinion whether right or wrong mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that opinion just grows yeah, so yeah I, feel, I feel like it has it's counterproductive <laughs> actually to cancel yeah someone. that's true it's hard to stop cancel culture because I don't think we can control everybody you mm-hmm. know what they want to say online you know when someone is evil they just 
evil online. Mm-hmm. So I hope that some people like realize that cancel culture is a part of cyberbullying as well. You canceling a person who does bad thing online, they make a mistake, but you yourself also doing something that's not great. Like for example, a person uh, make a mistake online, it's just that they got caught. Like how about you that make mistakes offline? Yeah, I feel like we were all just making mistakes every single day. It's just like, did anyone see? Did you did mm. you make the mistake of putting it online? Yeah, I think once. But it wasn't so big because it was a content where it was welcome on TikTok, but it wasn't welcome on Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's yeah, the difference so, in platform we were talking about, right? Yeah, I shut it down very quickly because I said my sorry and I just did it. So I wouldn't want it to spread it even more. So mm-hmm. was it for something that was wrong or? It wasn't wrong. Maybe I wasn't educated as much. People seem to forget that we the, the world is so big and mm. we don't all grow up learning the same things. And mm-hmm. being from a different country, we wouldn't particularly know if something is a offensive to like some Mm. group of people that is not part of our culture or country I guess yeah 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 you know and one of the things that I feel like is really bad nowadays is like yeah you can say like yeah I was uneducated on this topic but at the same time there Mm -hmm. are people who say like yeah but it's not my job to educate you okay you can't get educated on something if you didn't know it existed you can be like okay this is wrong maybe you should read up about this which is fine Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. how could you not know it when you're like on the other side of the world and then expect right just be a thing for everybody like I feel like that is also a very toxic kind of situation that's happening a lot online now as well yeah that's true because I remember I was uh, replying uh, to these people I was saying okay I'm so sorry if I'm not educated about you know certain slang so could you educate me on this instead of educating me they were saying like oh I hope you I hope you got crashed today I hope you got hit by a bus today so it was very toxic I had to delete the content yeah yeah and one of the worst things I feel is like sometimes people just jump on this hate bandwagon sometimes they don't even know what's happening they're just like oh this is fun let's take down this person today because everybody's online nowadays everybody has an equal opportunity (laughs) to get this kind of hate Mm -hmm. you you could be hating with someone today and like trying to bring them down and like it could just flip back onto you which is kind of what I wanted to talk about next because like when I saw you on on Twitter and you were talking about cancel culture like I feel Mm -hmm. like it was you were in a very vulnerable spot I feel like you were quite close to home like it was a real danger that this could have flipped back onto you so why did you decide to speak out about it and were you ever worried that it would push you into the line of fire I knew that you know someone gonna say about like you know it close to home or whatever but I wasn't just talking about a certain topic because I've seen I've seen this so many times Mm -hmm. happen to different people like they make a mistake and then they said they're sorry and then um the cancel culture continues. You're not only ruining a person's mental health, but you also could be ruining someone's livelihood. You know, not everybody has the same opinion as mine. You know, I hope there's somebody else that has the same opinion as me that you don't have to jump into the cancel bandwagon. Yeah. So it's kind of hard for a person who made the mistakes, you know, mm-hmm. like, so what do I do? Like, do I say my story or do I just leave it be? Yeah. And hopefully, either way, just people away. will just attack you. Yeah. I have encountered like, online hate it hasn't been as bad but even that mm-hmm. was like so hard to like handle like yeah. people you don't know are just like bashing you mm-hmm. calling for like your your company to fire you mm-hmm. and stuff like mm-hmm. that like even on this small scale it's so hard to bear like I can't imagine what it's like having to go through like say for instance like the entire country like trying to like bash you and like say yeah. you are worthless mm-hmm. yeah but I can't imagine you know how a person feel when the whole country is just attacking you so like but how would you because you do post a lot and everything and on all different Mm -hmm. platforms like is it like a a fear that you hold inside like when you're posting because like it always happens like this right like you you don't expect it and it Mm. could happen so fast like you just post Mm -hmm. one thing and suddenly like like everybody is against you like everybody on this platform is against you does that Mm. stop you from posting certain content definitely because i don't know what 
what's funny and what's not anymore. I used to touch on very sensitive topics. At that time, TikTok wasn't as toxic as it is now. I felt like at the time, it was such a safe place for me to be vocal about certain things. But mm-hmm. now, I tone it down a little bit because I would think twice whether if this is right to post. So I have that fear. It comes to a point where everybody jump into conclusion or like, you want to follow the norm. So how would you say like, if somebody is on, on, on social media, what would you say is the safest way to go? Because honestly, this is something I think about a lot and I don't have an answer. Have you figured it out? <laughs> safest way. There's no safest way on social media. Like any day, um, it could be the day. <laughs> Yeah, any day could be the day you get you got cancelled, so you don't know. <laughs> Whatever you do, you're just like, easy target, right? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a double-edged sword. Like, you want to be big on social media because that's the thing to do now, right? But then, like, yeah. at the same time, as soon as you like get any kind of recognition on social media, it's like, oh, you said this, like, 10 years ago? Oh, you don't yeah. deserve your platform. <laughs> I think for a person that's on social media, you have to be ready that you will eventually get all this how did you deal with it when 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 you went through this situation? Oh, I cried. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I can I imagine. For one whole week. Yeah, I cried, of course. Maybe because I never handled, like, such a big, like, the whole nation hates me, that kind of stuff. So it wasn't as bad. I just move on and then just forget about it and continue creating contents. It's very hard, actually. <laughs> How did you go back and continue to create content without being scared like it would just continue? You will get hate no matter what. What I do is once I see a negative comment, I, I delete the comment because I don't want to dwell on it. I try not to read comments anymore. I think as a creator yourself, you have to be ready. La. They are bound to have people that doesn't like you. Try not to be sensitive about it, I guess. I don't know. Like I can't say that. Like How you handle hate and how I handle hate is different. Yeah. Maybe I get so much hate that I'm like immune to it. <laughs> I do think it builds like an armor though. Like the more you get, like the, the more you can take. <laughs> I feel like it's that contradiction again, right? Like it's like people are always like, yeah, you must stand up for yourself. Don't be a victim. Yeah. But then when you stand up yeah. for yourself, like they're like, no, how could you do this? You know, you are a public figure. <laughs> So yeah, exactly. Do? Okay, you're going to see things you don't like online. You're going to see things that you don't mm-hmm. agree with. Scroll. Mm-hmm. Find the Mm -hmm. things that you like and you agree with and just stay on those Mm -hmm. pages instead, you know? I wouldn't want to waste my energy to send hate comments to that person. Okay, what is the hate comment that you get most often? If you watch my Auntie Lian content, it's mostly sarcasm. And then they would say like, why are you so annoying? (laughs) Well, that's your character, right? (laughs) It's hard. For me, I would tell people, like, you know, just ignore it. But then, like, you as a person, personally, you handle hate differently, so you can't really just ignore it sometimes. Sometimes it gets too much if it's the same people that, you know, you notice that these same people that give you hate. I always block the person. When a person sends you hate, they get excited when they get a reaction. I'm telling anybody who's listening right now, if you're looking for attention from whoever it is that you like online, this is not the way to go. We will remember you for the wrong reasons, okay? <laughs> go ahead. Like a message to like people out there, like people online, they're like, they're human also. Sometimes um, your comment will ruin someone's mental health. You never know what a person online going through. Yeah, I feel like people don't see that like a simple comment really really can affect you like negatively Mm. or positively one of the things I have learned and um, I guess this is a good place to end when I was getting a lot of hate comments one Mm -hmm. of the things I learned is responding with kindness Mm -hmm. actually works in your favor so Mm -hmm. when I first started getting all these like horrible comments like I responded to Mm -hmm. them and I was like oh explaining or just being like making a joke out of it they suddenly realize that you're a real person so yeah. if you respond as a real person most mm-hmm. times they will stop trolling you i suggest trying to approach it that way and then seeing That's what true. happens so if anybody is dealing with cancel culture or you are like um dealing with some toxic situations mm-hmm. online like taking a break is always an option mm-hmm. and talking to people in the real world and i guess trying to like figure out whether or not it is a problem or it is just a cancel culture situation. Like sometimes it is, sometimes it is you, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's not. So I guess we can all just yeah. like try and figure that out. But thank you so much for joining me, Miss Alvi. Thank you for inviting me, Kalista. And thanks for listening. And I will catch you in the next episode. The C Word with Kalista.